Good evening, and welcome to Evening Prayer. I'm Pastor Albert Triola from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Springfield, Virginia, and it is good to have you with us this night. Although I must admit that these services are being pre-recorded because I am on vacation this week. Um, the bulletin for this service is found on St. Mark's website on the prayer page, um, and we are using uh, the option one in the dialogue, and for the hymn of light, we will read together Joyous Light of Glory. Uh, and then everything else will follow as is printed in the bulletin. So let us begin. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light, the light no the darkness, darkness can overcome. overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and, and the day, day is, is almost over. over. Let your light scatter the darkness and, and illumine your, your church. church. Joyous light of glory of, of the immortal Father, Father. Heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and praise. We give thanks to you, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us read responsively Psalm 141. I will read the odd verses, and together we can read the even, the even verses. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let, Let my prayer, prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat of their sweet foods. Let the righteous strike me. Their rebukes as oil upon the head are not to be refused. Yet my prayers are continually against the deeds of the wicked. Let their rulers be thrown down upon the stones, that they may hear my words, for they are sweet. Just as one who tills the earth breaks the rock, so let their bones be scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Guard me from the trap that they have laid for me, and from the snares of evildoers. Let, Let the, the wicked fall into their, their own nets, while I alone pass through. We continue with a reading from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11, and 37 to 45. Give thanks to the Lord, and call upon God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the strengths of the Lord. Continually seek God's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant. O children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. The Lord is our God whose judgments prevail in all the world, who has always been mindful of the covenant, the promise made for a thousand generations, the covenant made with Abraham, the oath sworn to Isaac, which God established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for, the, for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. You led out your people with silver and gold in all their tribes. There was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad to see them go, because they were afraid of them. You spread out a cloud 
for a covering and a fire to give light by night. They asked, and you brought quail, and satisfied them for, with the bread from heaven. You opened the rock, and water flowed, so that the river ran in dry, the dry places. For you remembered your holy word, and Abraham your servant. So you let forth your people with gladness, your chosen with shouts of joy. You gave your peoples the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep your statutes and observe your teachings. Hallelujah. God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you continue to fulfill your covenant, promise to redeem the world from slavery and to lead your people into the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may survive our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel, the third chapter, verses 1 through 9. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And a reading from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, beginning at the 13th verse. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through your proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence of the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. darkness. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news. What purpose? For what purpose has God called you? The Thessalonians were called. They were one of the first churches established. And they were, they were busily sharing in one another's lives, sharing one another's burdens, their joys. It says that they, are, that they are among the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit, through belief in the truth. They held fast to God's promise. And they were clearly different from their neighbors. 
just as the people of ancient Israel were set apart by God to be different among their nation, among the, their neighbors, the nations around them, that people might see what it is like to live in love with God and one another. So God's holy church, as, as exhibited by this Thessalonian community, is showing that they are indeed children of God by their words and their deeds. Jesus said they, know, they will know that you are Christian by your love. They will know that you are my children by your love. And, they are, and we are seeing that through these Thessalonians. They had come to faith, and so they lived in that love. Now, it's fascinating how in the reading from 1 Samuel, we hear about Samuel, the boy, who had not yet known the Lord, but he worked there in the temple. He had not yet known the Lord, but yet he heard God calling his name. And so Eli, the priest, sends him back and says, listen, see what it is that God has for you to do. See what your role is in God's, in God's reign, in God's work. And Samuel goes back and he listens. You see, my friend, wherever you are, whether you are filled with faith or whether you're still kind of wondering, God can be speaking to you this day. God can be sharing the joy of the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection with you, that you may have hope and that you may bring it to those around you. These are weird times we're living through. We are, some of us are maintaining some form of isolation and, and others are just jumping right into a business, some sort of business as usual. Parks are packed. I was surprised to see restaurants with people on top of each other. And it's just quite interesting times for us. But wherever we are in our journey, God calls us to love one another, to bear one another up, and God is calling you today. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these in last day, days, God has spoken, spoken to us by the Son. Let us continue with the Gospel Canticle. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here and everywhere their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all servants of the church, 
for this assembly and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those burdens that weigh, that weigh heavy on our hearts or minds this night, that we lift up before you in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we command ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. Lord. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good night, and we, we wish you all a blessed evening and look forward to having you join us again for morning prayer.